If you want to connect with someone with a TikTok, a reel, a podcast, a live, any type of content, you can't just give them information. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can combine your expert advice with your real life experiences so that you stand out, you become unforgettable, and you get more views. When I was a kid growing up in Alabama, the best nights were the nights that my dad cooked out with the charcoal grill. When I smelled the lighter fluid and the smoke, I knew it was gonna be a good night. I was about six, seven years old, and as soon as I knew my dad was cooking out, I would go into my dad's closet, I'd pull out one of his old t-shirts, his old ball caps, and I'd turn it around backwards, and Lucas Bryant came to life. He was my dad's friend who lived next door, who was a mechanic, played by me. And we would just laugh, and I would stay in character, and my dad taught me how to have these impromptu skits with random characters at the age of six. And eventually that turned into a big time production when we entered the school talent show. And my dad and I sat at the edge of the stage and he sang to my friend, Shirley. Let me get Shirley for you, hold on. Meet Shirley, hi. Shirley's been with me a long time, and Shirley was who helped us win the talent show. My dad serenaded to Shirley. She loved it. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. I think that's how it went. Those are my fondest memories of me and my dad. When I was 13, he was diagnosed with bipolar depression. He had his first major episode, and he would never be the same. And I would never be the same, at least not for a long time. I decided that my dad's mental illness must be why he was so quirky and used those characters, and I did not want to be associated with that. I don't know if I consciously thought all these things, but I definitely made the decision that we were done, and I was going to be very serious, and I was going to go and pursue my reporter career to prove to everyone that I am not like my dad. Fast forward until my mid-40s, not too long ago, I had kind of a midlife crisis and I didn't know who I was and what I was doing with my life, except that I was still working really hard and getting nowhere as far as me being content and happy. I forced myself to go back in time to when I was really happy and carefree and I didn't overthink things. And it was back then. It was when my dad and I would have these goofy characters and we would play and we would use different accents and voices. And that's when I realized I needed to do that again. And I started to do that on my first TikTok account. And eventually I brought it to my video coaching business. I use those characters to connect with people and I do it in my own way. And I have a lot of fun, just like I did with my dad. Now my dad has Alzheimer's and to this day, I will bring out the characters or I'll ask him questions about those times. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. <laughs> and those are the stories that get him to snap back and I can see that piece of my dad. Because we've been doing characters since when you were two years old. Let's break down what I did. If you're still watching, you connected to my story in some way. Maybe it was family cookouts, or you remember times with your dad, or it was your imaginary friend of the characters you used to dress up like when you were a kid, or maybe it was the school talent show, but you connected to the details. And that's the stuff that we often leave out because we're so worried about being concise and keeping our content short. I am the queen of concise about getting to the point, but you have to have those details if you want people to stick to you. That's the sticky stuff that gets them to remember you. And then you have to have a story that has some kind of transformation, some kind of aha moment. So in mine, I talked about how I stopped using characters. I was very straight laced, all work, no play. And then I had this aha moment that that's what was missing. It was the characters and the playfulness. And I added that back. And then I started to really enjoy my business and stand out with my audience. So there's a transformation that happened after that aha moment. So again, you need a story, simple story, doesn't have to be complicated. You need the details and then you need to have a transformation that happens, an aha moment that gives you that transformation. And then you bridge into your teachable moment, the lesson that you have, just like I did in this video. I started with a story and then I went into how I use that story to connect with you. Now, if you wanna see how I use characters to tell a story, watch this video right here. 